Good? All right, good evening. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, thanks for joining us. If you have Bibles tonight, um, I should just say turn in your Bibles because I know you don't love Bibles. <laughs> turn in your Bibles. Second Timothy chapter 2. Received him not. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. 
he was crucified. Uh, his suffering was the suffering of taking on the sin of the world on himself. We don't have to do that. We can't even take on our own sin. But we can suffer with him as uh, joint heirs with him and as sons and daughters of God, we can be persecuted. Uh, we think we shared a few weeks ago that now it is Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world today. And it's just increasing all the more. And we still are fortunate in this country that it really hasn't hit us. But it's getting closer. And it's starting to get verbally uh, suffering, verbally persecuted with uh, the, the certain politicians and people are saying that we need to be silenced, we need to be shut down, we need to lose our 501c3 if we don't accept certain things. But we know that in, in India, North Korea, uh, <coughs> many Arab nations, that Christians are being beaten, killed, their houses being burned, they are, being, they are suffering, they are suffering with Christ. If we suffer with Christ, we will reign with him. It's just a promise of what the, the result of, of suffering with Christ is. In the tribulation period, we won't be here, thank the Lord. Uh, but the Christians, those who become Christians in the tribulation period, will suffer tremendously because they won't be able to buy and sell, because they won't take the mark of the beast and they will uh, be beheaded for their faith. And the, the amount of the people that are beheaded are without number, it says in Revelation. But it says, those that were beheaded for his name's sake will receive a crown of life and will be around the throne of God day and night forever. Uh, that's reigning with Christ. So if we suffer with him, we shall also uh, reign with him. Uh, the next one is, is probably the most serious one, but uh, if we deny him, he will also deny us. And this is just a more or less a general if. If this should happen to anybody that you deny him, he will deny you. Now we all, uh, in one way or another in our lives, have denied Christ. Different, different times and different ways we have denied him, uh, our, you know, different parts of our heart. Uh, he might have knocked on the door of our heart and like initially for salvation, I don't know how many times I denied him. You know, no, I don't want, don't talk to me about that. I don't want that. I don't, I'm good. I'm all set. Just like we hear people now when we go out on outreach and be, and try and hand him a track and oh, I'm all set. What are they doing? They're denying Christ in a sense. They don't want him. There are people who take a stand on this and really are adamant and say, I don't even want to hear his name mentioned. Don't talk to me about him. I, I'm, you don't want to be saved. No, I don't. I don't want to know about heaven. I don't believe in it. Uh, so you're denying Christ and they will say, yes, I am. Yes, I am, because I don't believe it. I, I, I'm denying him. Those people who lived their whole life, thank God, I denied him, but then I received him. That, that's called the grace of God. But those people who lived their whole life in denial of God and on their deathbed will not even receive him, but will die denying him. He will deny them at the great white throne judgment. And this is what uh, it's, it means in... Uh, in Matthew, when he says, many will come to me in that day. And they will actually say his name, that we did this for you, we did that. I, I will say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's the denial. I didn't know you, so you're departing from me. And then those that will stand at the great white throne, and, and literally people, it says in Revelation, I think it's 17, that people after, uh, all of the tribulation and all the things going on, people will still shake their fist at God and, and hate Him. And it's hard for us to imagine that because we love Him, but people will hate Him and shake their fist at Him. 
and, and they will go into hell. It, it, so if we deny him, he will also deny us. This, that's the lifelong denial of, of having anything to do with Christ whatsoever. You and I, when we deny Christ access into different areas of our hearts, or we know God wants to do something, but we deny his, his uh, initiations uh, or seeking his will, we want to do it our way, and God, uh, because we're his children, will chastise us and, and will keep at it. He keeps at it. Peter denied Christ. Peter, before this night is over, you will deny that you even know me three times. And imagine God saying that to us, and we could, because given the right set of circumstances, we could do the same thing when faced with persecution and death. Hopefully we won't. Many people don't, but Peter did, and Peter wept bitterly, and Christ forgave him, didn't he? And so, so Christ forgives us when we deny him different things in our lives because he knows uh, what we're all about. He remembers that we're made of dust. He knows that we're weak and we're frail. And it goes into the next um, if. And it says, uh, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. So there's a difference between denying God and believing not. Okay, I can believe not, and there's many areas in our life that we need to believe God more for, that we, we suffer from, a, from uh, unbelief in our lives. Like the, the, the lunatics, Father, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because he asked Jesus, if you can do anything, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible. I do believe, but help my unbelief. So if we believe not, is talking about not believing God exists at all or anything, but just not having the ability to believe in God in a given circumstance or situation. Uh, there are people, I was one of them, you were one of them, like we just talked about, I didn't believe in, in salvation because I was ignorant of it. I was raised a certain way, and I was, um, you know, that way left, you know, a sour taste in my mouth. And so when people started to try and present the true gospel to me, I just chalked it up to being the same thing that I heard as a kid. And I was like, no, I don't want to follow that way. I don't want, I don't believe that. Uh, but I didn't know what I was saying. And God knows this. And so if we believe not, God doesn't say, well, that's it, I'm done with you. No, he says, I, I, I will, like the intercessor, I will get them to believe. I will get them to hear. I will arrange circumstances because I know through foreknowledge that they will believe if they hear the truth, if they hear the gospel, if I can reveal my love to them, I know that they will believe. So if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, as opposed to if you deny me, I will deny you. But if you believe not, I will still abide faithful. I cannot deny myself. This goes into all the way back to the Abrahamic covenant that God made with Abraham, whereby when God swore by himself, he could swear by no other. Abraham couldn't make the same vow that God made because he was human and he was frail and he was weak and that proved out to be. But yet God made the covenant with Abraham. And in the, the Abrahamic covenant, the, the covenant is valid as long as one person believes in it and keeps it. And that one person was God. And so we might not believe God for something in our life, yet God abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. He will hold true to what he knows and who he is. And so we, by not believing, can't change God's mind on us because God knows what he has already promised us. He will not go, go back on it. And so that's a beautiful thing because we all know that there's many things that we struggle to believe God on. 
you know, even little steps of faith. Where is your faith, Jesus, said the disciple. Master, don't you care that we're perishing because he's sleeping in the boat? And he calms the sea and it makes Peter back in the boat. And he's like, you know, where's your faith? Where's your faith? This is what my trust, my faith, my belief in God. Where is it sometimes? It doesn't seem like it's there because I'm walking by sight. I'm looking at the storm. I'm overwhelmed by details and circumstances. And I just can't believe God for his promise that day. I hear it. I know it. But I can't appropriate it in my life because I'm overwhelmed. And God knows this, but yet he, he abides faithful to himself. He's not going to forsake us. I will never leave you or forsake you, Hebrews. Right? I will never, ever, no never will I do it, even if you aren't believing me on a given day or for a given period in your life. We've all gone through wilderness experiences as Christians where we feel like God has forsaken us. We don't sense God. We don't think he's there. But that is not the case. It is us that have gone into the dry place in our life because of sin or because of problems or because of being overwhelmed. But we have stopped fellowshipping with God and listening to God's voice and we have been too occupied with the voice in our head and the circumstances of going on. So for God to uh, forsake us would be for God to forsake himself. And, and we know that God forsook Jesus on the cross but he's not going to forsake us. It, it, it would be like God denying himself if he was to say to us, well, you didn't believe me and you should have, so therefore I'm, I'm casting you off. You're no longer a Christian anymore. So have fun. That, that would be silly for God to do that. He, he will not deny who he is in our lives. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He is our strength. And he knows this right well. And, and so what the goal is, is when we are like this, when we have our moments of unbelief, God wants to show us that we can believe again. Mm -hmm. That we can, I might not have, I might <clears throat> have, have this measure of unbelief, but help it, Lord. Mm -hmm. Help me believe again. We, David said it well in Psalm 50, I restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I want to have joy again. I want to be close to you again. I want to sense your presence again. I have not been believing you for things and I need to believe you for things again. And, and when you think about it, you, you know, what is the reason other than the circumstances, but why don't we believe God? Why don't we walk by faith more often? There is a reason for it. And the reason is, Yes, because our eyes are on something else, but also I'm preoccupied with something else. But it's not natural for us to believe in, in, the, in what we can't see. We are natural people, and so if we see it with our eyes, or hear it with our ears, or touch it with our hands, we are able to believe. But when, when it comes to God and believe in God, he's saying, no, it, it has to be by faith. That you're just and you the just shall live by faith and I'm not going to speak to you audibly I'm not going to show up invisibly so you can see me but I'm still there do you believe this I'm not going to to <clears throat> you know fix every problem in your life and and and, and what will you and so if I don't will you believe me that I'm, I'm still in your life mm -hmm. and then it's it's up to us to answer that but the moments and those times that we don't believe, God remains faithful. He remains faithful to who? Us. Us. Imagine that. That's amazing. God remains faithful to us. Like, he can't deny himself, uh, so, but he remains faithful to us. He made a covenant and a commitment to us. And when we don't keep our end of the bargain, he still keeps his. And, and he always will keep his end. He will not deny himself. 
Even though people will deny him, he won't deny himself. Even though there are times where we won't believe him and what he's saying, uh, he remains faithful. If you want to see a good example of it, uh, look at the children of Israel walking through the wilderness. They had many times of unbelief. In fact, one of the verses that God brings back to their memory, in case they forget, is that they said, can God furnish a table for us in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. And when they said that, God reminded of them that that's what they said mm -hmm. a few times in the scriptures. Can God do this? Can God? And he says, I made water come out of a rock. I brought manna down on the things. Your clothes never got old. Your shoes never wore out. How is it that you can say, can I do anything in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Of course he can. And even though they didn't believe because of circumstances and sight and looking at the situation, God remained faithful to them all the way to the promised land. It wasn't God's fault that they were in the wilderness for 40 years. It was their fault because they couldn't believe the spies when they came back. Well, they did believe the spies, but they wouldn't believe the two. So they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, even though they could have went into the promised land in 10 days. And, and, and yet God was with them all through those 40 years. In fact, he set up a tabernacle so his presence could be with them. And they, they carried it from place to place to place. Because God was faithful to his people, even though they weren't faithful to him. Even though they Moses went up to the mountain uh, to, to get the ten, ten Commandments from God, which they asked for. <laughs> they wanted them. They asked for them. So Moses goes up to get them because Moses took too long. They thought God killed them, and they said, oh, we got to make another God, let's make a golden calf. And Moses comes down with the tablets, you know the story. They're all partying and worshiping the golden calf. Did God destroy them? No. He didn't. He saw it through. Did he want to destroy them at times? Yes. <laughs> but he didn't. He remembered his covenant with them. He remembered the agreement he made, he remembered that they were his people and that, that he had a plan for them. So when they couldn't believe, God still did. And, and, and he saw it through. And it's the same way for you and I. And this is not to make us say, well, God, that's great, I don't have to believe God, he's still going to come through for me. No, it's far better, much better when we can believe God. When we take a step of faith and make some faith statements and say, I'm believing God for this. I'm, I'm believing God. I was talking to somebody last night and I said, I think I'm going to throw a fleece out to God. And they said, don't do that. Don't do that. Just because Gideon did it doesn't mean you can do it. You know, I said, throw the fleece out to yourself, not to God. Like in other words, believe God that he is able to do what you're throwing the fleece out for. Why do you need a sign? Don't you know that God can do it already? Yes, I do. Well, okay then. What do you need a fleece for? That's not really a fleece. It's like if this is God's will for my life, then I, I'm, I want him to do this. And I want to just, just go forward with it. If it's not his will, just trust it will block it. Like, okay, that, yeah, that makes sense too, you know. All right, because God's faithful to us. I don't need God to perform for me. This is faith, is, is trusting that God knows what's best. I don't need a performance from him for me to believe more. I just need to believe more. Yeah. But we have all the faith we need as, as, as uh, uh, children of God. When Christ himself said, if you had faith as the size of a grain of a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds, you could say to a mountain, be removed to the sea and it would obey you. And so you say, whoa, so how much faith do I have that <laughs> if I can't do that? And we all look at it and go, we well, you know we can't do that. But if we had faith as a mustard seed, we could do it. it and so this is a tremendous example of, we have, might pride ourselves in how much we believe <clears throat> God and I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know we believe in God, but how much do we believe God? 
to do things in our life. And Jesus is telling us, well, you don't even have enough faith as a mustard seed because if you did, you could move a mountain into the sea. Is it figurative? What if it is? What's, what's the mountain in your life? Is it bills? Is it health? Is it problems? Then you can move those into the sea with the mustard seed faith. But many times those don't move anywhere because we simply don't have the ability to believe that way. And so, but, so when we believe not, when we don't have that and we don't, uh, yet he, remain, he abides faithful with us. He doesn't deny himself. And so he still works on our behalf. And then he encourages us, just like he did with his disciples, to say, have, you know, O oh, ye of little faith, increase your faith. Where is your faith? Have faith in God. That's what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Like he can do these things. And so uh, those four ifs tonight are good teaching principles to us in the Bible. And none of them, if you're a believer, uh, you've acknowledged Christ. You never have to worry about denying him your whole life. You already acknowledged him. So that you never have to worry about, oh, if I, I denied God and I didn't let him have access to him, this or that. That's not what it's talking about. Uh, if we're dead with him, we will live with him, and we are dead with him. And in those times when we believe not, he's going to remain faithful to us. These verses are actually, uh, uh, when you first look at them, go, oh, I don't like those so much. But really, they're very encouraging for us. They're challenging to us to believe God more and to not worry about him denying us because we already acknowledged him as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> thank you. Hey, Father, thank you. Uh, for, thank you for loving us. Thank you for remaining faithful to us, Lord. We are frail. We are weak. We are just sometimes very dumb sheep. But we are the sheep of your pasture. And you will not forsake us. You love us. You died for us, Lord. I pray that if anybody watching tonight has never received you into their heart, they would. God died for the sins of the world, your sins included. Came here to do that because we couldn't. And all he asked for is us to believe on him and receive that into our hearts. Don't deny God. Don't spend your life denying Christ because you've heard weird concepts of him. You've heard about him from the precepts of men. Hear about him from his own mind, his own voice, his own spirit that will come into your heart and he will teach you all about him and, and his love for you. Receive Christ into your heart. Ask him to come in right now and he will. And Father, uh, uh, we just love you and we praise you tonight. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay. Thanks for watching YouTube, Facebook.